many new options, many new features, incredible range, amazing price. Stop that. Almost immediately after the release of the new SDR transmitter, a lot of new and great reviews were released. In fact, in each you will find a bunch of useful information, so if you still haven't watched, be sure to check out some of them. In my video, I would like to tell you in a few minutes what my feelings are after a month of using and testing this equipment. If you are a professional filmmaker and you need a good transmitter with phenomenal range, with great quality, with rock solid connection, and if the DJI transmission system is definitely more than you need, then DJI has a great new option for you. You know, not everybody works in the DJI ecosystem, so not everybody needs the advanced features that DJI transmission gives you. And if you don't need something, then you don't want to pay for it, right? On the other hand, all cheaper solutions usually have many limitations and many compromises. And here comes the new device from DJI, which in a way can do less than its bigger brother, but much more than the competition. Now which is basically standard for all professional transmitter, is full-size SDI and HDMI, battery and USB-C power option, compact and lightweight design and universal mounting options. What's more, in the menu you will find a lot of useful settings such as a manual channel selection, low latency mode and even cooling fan noise level. But something that always makes any equipment from DJI outstanding are a few options and features that competitive brands can only dream of. For example, SDR transmission, which gives you rock-solid signal quality, extreme long range, innovative USB-C monitoring, broadcast mode, which gives you unlimited number of receivers, and running compatibility, which gives you remote control. Software-defined radio is a bit like a magical combination of a radio signal and a device that you can program. In other words, you can use that radio signal to communicate with different devices as well as send information depending on how the transmitters and receivers are configured. Basically the same thing is done by a Wi-Fi signal, but the difference between the two is that SDR can operate on a much wider range of frequencies. This way it performs better in challenging conditions, so you get better quality, less interference and much better range. Now, DJI claims a range of 3 km, which is phenomenal, but I think most of us will never use the full potential of this feature, but remember that it's not just about distance. The better the range, the better the performance through walls, building and other obstructions, which is especially important on sets where the action is behind the walls. Over the past few weeks, I've been able to test the performance of this device both indoors and outdoors, and in both situations it's really great, with no comparison to other devices. Now, in terms of long range, so far only the DJI transmission gives us the possibility to see the footage from a distance in car shooting scenarios, so here it is definitely going to be a great option for smaller budget productions that didn't have the option of using DJI transmission and were also limited by the short range of other transmitters. Now, of course, something that makes the DJI transmission so special is not only the brilliant range, but also the option to control the camera movements, but here in a way it is also possible. If you are using a camera that is compatible with the DJI SDR, you can remotely change the settings, which would be very helpful in any kind of shots where you don't have quick access to the camera. What's more, the transmitter is fully compatible with DJI Ronin. You can use a special bracket to put it on the gimbal, exactly like with the Raven Eye. And in exactly the same way, you can control the movements of the gimbal. All the movements are incredibly responsive, thanks to extremely low latency, and even if this motion control seems to be not very precise, in my opinion, it is absolutely phenomenal and it is completely enough for the simplest shots. Now, another new feature that makes this transmitter a fantastic device is several connection configurations. The first is, let's say, the most traditional one, which is the SDI or HDMI and a dedicated monitor. The second option is an innovation, which is a transmission via USB-C, where you can use a smartphone or tablet as a monitor, which, by the way, sometimes have better image quality than the cheapest dedicated monitor. And the third option is via Wi-Fi, where you can also use a smartphone or tablet totally wirelessly, but with a much limited range. So, as you can see, at this point, I am sure that any of these configurations will find many possible ways to be used on any film set. What's also important is that no matter if you put an SDI or HDMI signal into the transmitter, you will get this signal on every single output in every configuration and in addition all at the same time and with the same low latency. 
Now, when it comes to transmission delay, the latency in the signal itself coming out of the camera is also an important aspect. I've noticed that not many people pay attention to this. This latency, of course, depends on the type of monitor and the type of source signal, so keep that in mind. In the menu of the transmitter you have a low latency mode, which probably has some impact on the range and quality of transmission. On the other hand, I didn't notice a single negative change and with this you get a very responsive, super quality transmission which will work perfectly even in the most difficult scenarios. The quality of the transmission is so good that when I saw the image from the transmitter on the big monitor for the first time, I was pretty sure that it was the image straight from the camera through the SDI cable. It is obvious that in some ways this quality must be compressed, but in normal real-world use on set, this is unnoticeable. In the new SDR transmission, you will find not only the two basic modes, control and broadcast, that we know from DJI transmission, but one additional that is a Wi-Fi mode. Now, you get the best range, solid connections and the best transmission quality in control mode, but you have a limitation here because you can only use two receivers here. But of course, you still have the option of Wi-Fi transmission straight to your smartphone. What's more, you also have the option of two-way communication via headphones between one transmitter and one receiver. Another mode is broadcast, where you can use an unlimited number of receivers, but then you have a slightly worse range. But again, imagine how good and relative cheap this will be on large sets where everyone can get their own receiver. The last and the simplest is Wi-Fi mode, where you basically don't need any receiver and all you need is a smartphone, exactly like in the old Raven Eye style. In this mode, of course, you have the smallest range. Now, I've been testing SDR transmission for a month now, I use it on a few sets and if I have to find any downsides right now, I found two of them. The first is integrated antennas. Maybe it's not a big downside, but in my opinion, traditional removable antennas are a better solution because you can replace them. We all know that like in any equipment, it also can get damaged on set. Another thing I would really like to see is compatibility with a hybrid monitor. And of course, I realize that if there was such a possibility, I'm sure that DJI would give it to us. So I understand that some kind of technical limitations might be a problem. Anyway, in the same way as with drones, where not all controllers are compatible with each other and sometimes it is a technical issue, maybe also a business matter, but I believe that if there was an option, then we would get it. When I saw this equipment for the first time, I thought it was a great alternative to DJI transmission system and it should be on sale in the consumer market section. You know, great tiny device, super low price and super easy to use. On the other hand, now after these few weeks of testing, I believe that it is also a piece of equipment which for many reasons belongs to the DJI Pro line. You can definitely use this on a professional set where you don't always need additional accessories from DJI Pro and what's more, in a way, you can't combine them. You can put the transmitter on a hybrid monitor and so you can extend the video transmission without the need for additional expensive monitors and what's more, the transmitter is so light that you will forget it is on the monitor. All you need for this combination is even an older iPad and then you have a phenomenal live view for the client or the rest of the team. We all know that production monitors are usually big and heavy and I understand that sometimes this is a requirement because of their quality, but come on guys, we all know that for most situations, even on very professional sets, an iPad is completely enough and what's more, it is even better solution because it is a totally lightweight and mobile device. Imagine a director who runs around the set with a big monitor. So I think that maybe it is not a device that you must have but I am absolutely sure that in the price range, you will not find anything so good and the most of all, nothing that will give you such flexibility of use in almost any configuration.
Guys, that's all for today. I hope the video will be helpful. As always, thanks for all the comments and likes and see you in the next video.